How's it guys? This is Brett from Stealth once again. Um, today, I'd just like to do a little bit of a video and trying to help you choose a Stealth kayak. I know we have like quite a lot of kayaks in the range now and I probably haven't done an updated video for a while, but yes, I suppose every kayak in our range has you know, one characteristic that maybe that you would lean towards or, or that you should lean towards. So I'll just chat through a few things, help you out maybe help you identify what to look for when you're trying to choose a kayak. Um, the first thing is obviously we'll, we're not here to do a run through of each kayak and the features. I mean we have our videos on our channel, we have literally walkthrough videos of every, almost every single, I think actually you have every single kayak in our range. So you can look at our walkthrough videos which tells you about every fitting, every feature of the specific kayak. But today we're going to be touching on how do I choose a stealth kayak and I think that's key. So when it comes to Choosing a stealth kayak. The first thing I always say to people is when they ask me a question, I'll go, how much do you weigh and how tall are you? Now, it's something that's not set in stone, guys. It's something, it's a guideline. So for me, let's say you're 100 kilograms, for example. I'm going to go, okay, in my mind, it rules out X and Y and, and I can guide you towards the, another two kayaks because of, of your weight. Or if you're super tall, I'll say, okay, right, that eliminates that kayak because those are the two kayaks that suit the taller person. So those features, definitely help to narrow it down. And then the next thing that you've got to ask yourself is, where am I fishing? What kind of conditions am I fishing in? You know, am I paddling far? Um, am I bottom fishing predominantly? Am I game fishing predominantly? So depending wherever you are in the world, those are the other questions you've got to say to yourself. And what do I want to get out of the kayak for the, for the fishing that I'm going to be doing? So when we look at our range, we obviously have now three main ranges. Okay, we have the fusion range, small Fusion 350 and the Fusion 480, we have the Pro Fisher range, our top of the range kayaks, and we have the Fisher range. And we even now have another kayak, sorry, the Elite. So the Elite's also its own different class, not to be confused with any of the other kayaks, it's its own little, little baby. So, I'll say to the guys, are you starting out? Are you launching into rocky bays and rocky conditions? Maybe you're leaving your kayak at a, at a, at a holiday home and storing it somewhere. Maybe you, you're just looking for something to use once or twice a year, put it in the corner and, and you get to go and do you know, nice and simple and easy fishing. If that's the case, the fusion is the answer. And, and without a doubt in my mind. It's something that you can lend to friends, you can jump on it, you can kick on it, you can drive over to the car. It's gonna keep going. It's super tough right to mold of plastic and it's there all day to last. So that kind of fishing, that kind of market or that kind of idea that you're in, like I say, maybe it's a holiday home, maybe it's once a year fishing, maybe it's just a little bit of bottom fishing somewhere, not paddling too far, the, the Fusion really does fit in that gap. Remembering the Fusion is also one of our widest kayaks, okay, so it's one of our, has the most stability. So it's got the stability, it's got massive hatch, lots of storage space, it's got all the features of all the other kayaks, but it has its little niche in the market. So, as I said, two kayaks in that range, you know, a Fusion 350, which is a smaller one, and a, and a Fusion 480. Fusion 350, ideal for people that are, maybe kids, ladies, or guys that are starting out at one thing super basic, like a little bit less features, a lot more affordable, gets you on the water, maybe one day you want to upgrade from there. So don't be fooled, the Fusion 350 definitely has a spot, depending on where you are and what you want to do. Okay. So then you say to yourself, well, you know, like I'm slightly more serious or I want, you know, a little bit more paddling. I mean, fishing a little bit more often. The fiberglass kayaks, of course, a lot more glide in them, it's much better performance all round than a Fusion. Once again, taking into account what you want to achieve out of it. So that's where the glass kayaks come into their own, is the performance. Obviously lighter too, so predominantly a lighter kayak than a Fusion. The two, the, the two main ranges, the the, Fusion, the Fisher range and the Pro Fisher range and then of course the Elite. Okay, I need to touch on the Elite. There's been a lot of confusion out there. A lot of guys are going, you know, I've paddled the Elite and this is great and everything, but you know, it's, it's, it's not the same as my 525. And I'm like, guys, the 530 was never ever designed to replace the 525. That there is a 525, this one here is a 530. If you just have a quick look at it, you can see 530 has got a lot more of a flatter rocker. So it's a lot less rocker in the boat than the, 5, 2, than the 525. Its seat is higher, it's different stability, it's a different feel on the water, it's less volume, it's more compact. So it, it's never designed to replace the 525, but it was designed to give an alternative 
And I think the reason why that came into play was in some of our markets overseas, in some of our places, guys love the 575, okay? But if you've got a garage and a standard size garage, there's a, there's a small chance that the 575 is probably about that much too long, okay? And, and it doesn't fit. So a lot of the guys we export and we sell to in a lot of the international markets, the guys, you've got to take into account that a, a, a 575 doesn't necessarily fit into a standard garage. I mean, if you've got a double garage or something, yeah, no problem. But I mean, a standard single garage, it doesn't fit. And in actual fact, an interesting fact, the 525 was made and developed when I realized that the 575 <laughs> is actually bigger than your car. So we, at the time, I think Toyota had come out with a new double cab, which was a little bit bigger than what we were used to. We went and we measured the length of the Toyota double cab and we made the 525 to match the length of the car. Because in my eyes, if the, the car fits in the garage, your kayak fits in the garage. And I think that's why the, one of the reasons why the 525 is very popular. Of course, without trying to make it just a slightly smaller version than the 575, I did make the 525 a little bit wider. I did make it a little bit more stable. It's got a little bit of vo different volume all, all around, a little bit more rocker than a 575. So, I mean, that's how it came about. So, so yeah, I mean, that's where it ends between those two. But going back to what we're talking about, how do you choose it? So, if you've been fishing for a limited amount of time, maybe you haven't done much paddling, maybe you're a little bit concerned, you know, can I balance or will I get the stability out of a kayak? Then no doubt, that's when you start off in the Fisher range. Each one of the Fisher kayaks, regardless of their size, 460, 500 or 555, has really good stability, okay? The best stability being the triple five and the 500. In, in some cases, I think people underestimate the stability of the, of the 500. You know, the upgrades and the changes that we did last year makes that 500 almost as stable, if not, I think, as stable as the triple five. That goes now back to how tall you are, how heavy you are. If you're really tall, maybe a little bit heavier than the triple five is where you'd go, but if you're a normal size guy, normal, normal weight, you want the stability, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the 500. So the 500, triple five for the most stability. The 460, maybe you're a little bit smaller, but you still want a kayak with stability, then you're gonna go towards the 460. Maybe you've been fishing a bit longer, maybe you, you're like, nah, but I'm gung-ho, I'm 100% confident. Just give me something that really performs well, or I'm, I'm not worried about you know, stability. And, and let's be honest, if you sit in a fishing car compared to a surf ski or a canoe, it's light, light day is different. I mean, a lot of the guys that I know that fit in, sit in a fishing kayak can't even balance in a surf ski and vice versa. A guy who sits in a surf ski jumps in a fishing kayak and he goes, wow, this is so stable. So if you've done any kind of paddling, don't be fooled. Our range is very stable, but we're obviously comparing it to each other. So the, the stability comparisons are the comparisons to the craft in the range, not necessarily to a, a surf skier or a canoe, which is very unstable and compared to any kayak in our range. Okay, so going back to it, the Pro Fisher range is obviously our top of the range ski with the carbon fittings and everything alongside the Elite that is. And, and this one is where if you want that just a little bit extra performance, you know, slightly lighter than your Fisher because of the carbon fittings and a few other things that we do on the kayak that make it a touch better. Um, that goes back to you, your walkthrough videos once again. But the 575 is common for the guys who are paddling far, long distances, want to cover lots of ground. Maybe they just want to pull lures. The length of the 575 will give you that little bit of extra speed. So you've got the speed to paddle. You can use your 575 to your advantage. A little bit faster, go a little bit further. You know, get to cover a lot more ground on the water. That's where the 575 comes into. The 525, we've touched on it. You know. If I sat on that and I paddled that and I sat on this and I paddled this, I'll notice a slight difference, a little bit more stability on that, but I'm not gonna get off that and go, wow, the 575 is just so much faster. It, yeah, it does feel better, it does feel a little bit faster, but it's not a massive difference. So you're restricted to space and restricted to your garage space or whatever, you're not being compromised by getting a 525 over a 575. So you quite comfortably, quite easily head over to that. Then of course our baby in the range, the which is not actually the baby because the 460 is smaller, but it's probably our smallest, lightest, most compact kayak is the 475. And a lot of the countries and a lot of the places we export to, it's very popular. I think also that's because of the reason that 
people come from being used to a plastic kayak, most of your plastic kayaks are small. Most of your plastic kayaks are all in the region of about three and a half to maybe maximum 4.2, 4.3 meters long. So a 4.75 meter kayak is actually still a little bit bigger than what you're used to, but in our range, quite a lot smaller. That kayak, maybe you like the fishing freaks were back in their day, you know? Small, tiny little oaks, don't weigh much. They love them, you know? That's right where it fits in that range. It's, you know, you're under 100 kilos, you want something light, compact, you can pick it up, put it on your shoulder, pop it onto your car. That's where the 475 fits in. So its advantage is being, being smaller, it's lightweight. In the surf, it will outperform a longer kayak. Like I was saying, the longer your kayak, the faster you go. But the longer your kayak, also trickier it is to, to get it to turn. You gotta learn to, to manipulate or learn to turn the kayak. The shorter kayak, like the 475, if I get on it, I can almost surf it like a surfboard. Understanding how the rudder works, and it, it, I can't do that on a 575, but I can do that on a 475. So the surf performance on a shorter kayak will exceed the longer kayak. So, I mean, those are your, your guidelines, I want to say, across the range. Never forgetting, we touched on the 530, how it fits in, where it fits in. Obviously, we originally were going to only make it in a carbon and a, and a, and a hybrid. Had a lot of demand for guys asking for a glass version. So the glass version of the Elite is now made exactly the same way we make a 575. All the materials are exactly the same. Obviously, we've kept the hatches and everything else. It's the standard, but a, a standard glass 530 is the same as a standard glass uh, 575 and a 525 and so on. So that fits into the range now. You still can buy the carbon hybrid, obviously, obviously, but that's where the glass version of this has come around. So I think you need to take a step back when, you, when, you, when you're unsure about a stealth kayak or maybe you, you, know, you get caught up and like, ah, that's the one because so-and-so is paddling it. Take a step back, do a little bit of research, watch our videos, look at the walkthrough videos and the features with a little bit more in-depth discussion about the kayak or, or where it comes or where it's widest pointers, why it's widest pointers there. You know, my, my understanding of kayak design over the years, I can take a kayak and I'll get feedback from someone and, and the guy will go, oh, this and I'll, in my head I'll go, okay, I know what to change. And I, I, can, I can change it and I can quickly manipulate or change the mold and fix it and, I, and he goes off and he paddles it again and he comes back and goes, way better. Like, that's my understanding, but I, that's my understanding and not necessarily the guy who's starting out who doesn't really know, he just wants to go for a paddle. So. Hopefully, the knowledge that I've tried to share with you and how each kayak fits into the range has made it a little bit easier for you to choose a kayak. But to finish it off, it's a simple email. Email your dealer, email myself. I'm always there for, 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 to, you know, for, to ask questions. Drop us a WhatsApp through the website. Ask questions, say, you know, guys, I, I'm unsure. You know, this is how much I weigh. This is where I want to fish. What would you do between the two? And I'll be happy to assist. Any of our dealers in any of the countries, you know, the new guys in Dubai, uh, New Zealand, Australia, America, poof, I can't even remember all the countries off the top of my head, or oh, the guys of Portugal and Europe and in the UK, their knowledge of the kayaks and, and each kayak in the range, they can definitely help point you in the right direction. So ask questions, don't be afraid to, 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 to get a bit of feedback so that you, that decision that you make is a little bit easier. But do remember the basics of what I've touched in the video, you know, length, width, weight, those kind of things, and then obviously where you're fishing. If you take those into account, you can start to narrow down the kayak that may suit you in the range. And hopefully we've got something for you, because I can assure you, one model or one type of kayak doesn't suit everybody. And, and I think that's important to know that as well. You might be, have a preference for this, and he, and he might have a preference for that, and, and, and Joe might have a preference for that, and so on. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit more insight for you. And as I said, if you feel free to ask any questions and yeah, thanks for listening.